It started as a typical evening for us in Jakarta. We were hungry and craving local food, so we did what any other budget travelers would do and set out searching for a night market. The lights of the old city against the deep violet of the night sky made it feel like a painting as we wove our way through the Dutch colonial giants towering above us. We turned a corner onto a main street and out of nowhere... Oh, you sure you're okay? Yeah, I think so. Watch out when you're walking in Jakarta at night. The sidewalks will kind of just open up into these drainage ditches and it looks really gnarly in there. I think I got really lucky. I just stepped and went straight down. I had no idea what was happening. I had the camera in my hands. Luckily, I think I caught it and that the camera's okay. And all I did was scrape my leg up on the inside of like the nasty sewer. <laughs> so it's pretty gross. I should, I'm, we're gonna go clean it. We were on our way to a night market. Yeah, so. There's that. I feel like it could have been way worse. That was like, what, a three foot drop? I mean, it went all the way down to my leg and this leg was on the ground and it went basically down to here. Yeah. Right? So like, yeah? <laughs> Me too. It could have been so much worse. That almost happened to me the other day. I know, it's dangerous out here. Mind your P's and Q's. All right, we're gonna go back to the pods, I guess, and clean myself up. Maybe we can find some bandages on the way. Everybody is so nice. As we've been walking back to the hotel, everybody keeps stopping to look and see if I'm okay. I mean, you're limping. You have blood dripping down your leg. That is very true. <laughs> we can't find a pharmacy that's close by. So we're gonna just go back to the box. Ah, oh, it sucks to walk though. We are back in the cube. And luckily, this place is great. They had a bunch of really like proper first aid gear. So I'm taking this as a sign from the universe that wherever we were going, we probably shouldn't have been. So it was stopping me and letting me know that no further. <laughs> Dr. Ashley is going to patch me up. It looks like we're in a hospital, but yeah. we're not. It, it fits the mood perfectly. It really so. does. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. This might hurt a little bit. <sighs> Many years of skateboarding has prepared me for this moment. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Does it hurt? No, it's really not that bad. That was gonna be so much worse. It stings for sure, but there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that I'm all patched up, it's time to figure out what we're gonna do with the rest of our night. Yeah, we'll get back to you. All right. So it's a little bit different of a day than we expected it to be. Our idea was to continue exploring that night. Pasar malam di Kota Tua. Pasar malam Kota Tua? Yeah. Okay. And get our true first impressions of Jakarta. But none of the places we went were like open or real street food markets. So we decided to take it easy and hang out in our little box for a couple days. Let my leg get better, which it's getting there. We didn't want to miss exploring this beautiful city. Now we're at the National Monument. We took a tuk-tuk to get here, which is the first time we've taken one of those in Indonesia. It's a Sunday, so it is absolutely <laughs> packed. There are so many people everywhere. This whole square is enormous. I'm a little bit hobbly and wobbly, but I'm not gonna let it stop us. Are you? Nope. Nope, all Have right. Have a good day. Yeah, let's go. There's an ondo ondo. So what are these things? I believe if you give them money, they're supposed to give you good luck. <laughs> Not entirely sure, but yeah. And sometimes they'll be walking around town and they're these really like tall characters, but. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Italy. Italy, no, USA. Huh? America. America. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yes. Oh. For me, I look very pretty. Are oh, you bagus? <laughs> bagus. Oh. Ah. Bagus. <laughs> it's just my size. Hello! <laughs> we are the Boulets. 
we are. So somebody please tell us in the comments, is boule a rude term? I don't take it that way. To me, it just is the same thing as saying like foreigner. But I'm curious to know kind of what your thoughts are because I'm not really sure. Are they saying it in a condescending way or is it a term of endearment or does it depend on the situation? Let us know in the comments, we're curious. We hear it all the time and we never know how to respond other than like, yeah. Hello. Let's go find this, this monas. straight up having a dance party up here. <laughs> I love how everybody congregates in these popular places. That's one really cool thing we've noticed about Jakarta so far. trying to get into the entrance of Monas but it looks like it's guarded off at least on this side so we're walking around to the other side right now and a kind gentleman came up and told us that it was already closed for the day but we're gonna walk around to the other side and hopefully be able to get in but if not we'll head to the mosque and the cathedral next the grounds are really beautiful here this is a beautiful beautiful park and there's a ton of people everywhere just enjoying the weekend, which is really, really nice. We've kind of been stuck in that hostel for the last two days while Mike recovered and just kind of took it easy and got caught up on work. It was a very small hotel room, so it's nice to get out and kind of start exploring. And we have such little time left in Indonesia, so it's kind of cool to get to see some of these historic places. Looks like this is gated off too. Hmm. Feels like we took the long way around. And of course there's no shade, so it's just, Hot. This place's construction was finished in 1975. To come up with the design, they put together a committee of people, and that committee held two contests. Out of both contests, only one designer was selected both times. Once they took that design, they pitched it to the king, and the king was like, no, I want it to look a different way, so I need it to be redesigned. That designer redesigned it, and I guess made it so big that they wouldn't be able to afford to build it. He was asked to shrink the design and the designer was like, absolutely not. I'm not gonna shrink the design. You should just wait until you can afford to build it the way it was originally done. Well, the king vetoed that idea and found someone else to continue with the design to make it the way it is now. A little fun fact of history about how this place was constructed. It says exit, but people are walking in, so we're gonna give it a try. The guard is pointing us to the Pintu Masuk entrance. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see what, what happens. Why are you giggling? Because <laughs> there's like people giggling at us. It doesn't seem close. was 45,000 for the both of us. Unfortunately, we can't go to the top. It was sold out, but we can see the museum and the goblet, whatever that is, so we'll go check it out. how many people are sprawled across the floor. <laughs> it's probably cool though. I'm not super mad about it, but it is really dark in here. So I'm not looking forward to going back out in the sunlight and just being like, <sighs> Blinded. At the bottom of the National Monument are 51 dioramas depicting Indonesian history from the 4th to the 21st centuries. They are incredibly detailed and each has a plaque explaining the scene in front of you. Now we're going to try and make it to this mosque before the last tour ends. It's 3.30, no so we don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Yep, just as I suspected, I'm blinded. Not pleasant, 
And it's hot again. We always pick the wrong time to come out and explore. It's pretty though. Sure is pretty. And we're learning. Yeah. Jakarta is a beautiful city. It is. It's very, very busy. <laughs> very busy. Which makes sense with 11 million people. This is the biggest city that we've ever been to. It feels like it. Sure does. <laughs> All right, let's get to the mosque. All right, I think it's this way. So we just tried to get in. Apparently we went to gate five. You can enter at gate seven. Two more gates. We're almost there. We're a little bit confused as to where to go to get in. We have heard that there's free tours here, which is awesome. So far, we've been pointed in a couple different directions because non-Muslims have to go check in at a different location than people who are here to worship and pray. I think we're going the right way now. So this looks like it's the women's entrance, but there are men bullies going in, so we're just gonna follow. <laughs> I like this robe. <laughs> How does it look? <laughs> what do you think? It looks fancy. It's very comfortable. Yeah, it's very soft. Good. I wonder how long this is going to be. Oh no. It's really hot. You're getting a lean in. Yeah, I'm really tired. The heat's gotten to me a little bit. So it turns out when you get here, you have to go through the women's or Juanita entrance, and then you walk through the hallway a little bit, and on your right, there'll be what feels like an interrogation room. You have to fill out a form. They'll provide you with robes. Right now, we're waiting in this main area for the guide to come out, and we'll go on our tour. So we're really excited to check it out. Yeah, we got here right at four o'clock, and that was the second to the last tour. There was a break right before this one, so we literally just lucked out perfectly. <laughs> Sometimes we got it. We luck out a lot. Yeah. Except when we're missing our train. <laughs> <laughs> we luck out a lot until we don't. Yeah. And then it's until like. You fall through a hole. Yeah, and then we fail hard, <laughs> <Yeah>. usually. <laughs> but, oh well. Okay, everyone. My name is Yusuf. I have a staff of information in this mosque. And I'll be guiding you all to look around the mosque for about 15 until 20 minutes. You are allowed to take a picture or make a video inside. No problem. Come on, soft. <laughs> so plush. Wow, this place is huge. Look at the ceiling. Thank you for taking a picture. <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is the best angle. In the car, please take a picture. Better light from this side. Okay. Please take photo. Our guide explained the significance of the mosque construction and that each structural feature held meaning in Islam or Indonesia's independence. In this mosque have many symbols or philosophical, like the dome, yeah, the big dome. The diameter of this big dome is 45 meters. This is a symbol of the years of Indonesian Independence Day, 1945. And the second dome, the diameter of the second dome is 8 meters. This is a symbol of the month, August because Indonesia was independent in 17 August 1945. And for the date 17, you can see from our side, there is a pineapple which is higher 70 meters. This boss have 12 colors, the big pillar here are 12. This is also the symbol of the birthday of our prophet Muhammad. And then this boss have five floors. And the number of five represents the five principles in Islam, the five pillars in Islam. The architect he was Mr. Freddy Shilaban. He was a Christian. Actually, and he built this beautiful mosque for us. He built uh, this mosque and also the, the, the mosque, the, the same person, the same architect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Come on, follow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome. 
each of these squares is for one person and they'll put down carpets and they'll pray I think it's once or twice a year uh, during Ramadan when there's hundreds of thousands of people here so they'll put them in the courtyard uh, but that's what all these squares are for and all of them face Mecca. I know absolutely nothing about the Muslim religion so it's really cool getting this little bit of insight into it. We used this photo many years ago, long time ago, when there was a lost speaker, even electricity. <laughs> and this is originally Indonesian culture, not in religion, so you can find this in the here in Indonesia. You cannot find this in the other mosque in the other country, only in Indonesia. We are always living togetherness. This is a symbol of tolerance. We are never conflict. We have no get. We are always open each other. And this is a symbol of peace each other. Because we know in Indonesia there are five religion, Islam, Christian, Catholic, Hindus and Buddhist. And we are always living togetherness. This is a symbol of peace each other. That's cool. Do you learn a lot? Yeah. A lot I did too. Yeah. yeah. I think it's really cool that the Catholic Church was built right across the street as a sign of tolerance and unity and they work together every year during their holidays to support one another so during like Ramadan they will donate their parking to the mosque and then vice versa for Christmas so it's kind of a cool thing. <laughs> Be brave, I guess. We're here at the Jakarta Cathedral, and I know that you can't take a tour here. You could just kind of go to the, I guess, the entrance and look around. Uh, so I figured we'll do that. We're here. We might as well. We learned about the mosque. We'll try and learn a little bit about this cathedral. And it looks really, really cool. I know that there's the three spires. I don't know what they represent, but it's a really beautiful cathedral. It looks very gothic and old. So it turns out <laughs> they're actually having mass right now. So we can't go inside until after six, but I don't know if I've got it in me to wait around that long. After spending the last few days indoors due to my leg injury and a mild case of food poisoning, the heat and the day's activities really took it out of me. We headed to a nearby cafe hoping for the pick-me-up we needed, but it just wasn't enough. And with an early morning the next day, we decided to call it a night. Today was our last day in Indonesia before our visas expired, and it was not how we expected to end our time in Jakarta. We had a lot planned. There were so many things to see and new foods to try, so it was disappointing that we weren't able to experience everything this incredible city had to offer. From the moment we arrived in Indonesia, we were mesmerized. From the unique cultures and expansive rice terraces of Bali, to the rich history, epic volcanoes, and delicious cuisine of Java, this country has captured our hearts. At the center of this experience are the incredible people we've met and interacted with along the way. A trip to any country can best be defined by the people who live there, and Indonesia has some of the most genuine and kind-hearted people we've ever encountered. From their willingness to help and teach us about their culture to the smiles on their faces, the people of Indonesia are the country's true national treasure. With over 17,000 islands to explore, it would take a lifetime to immerse ourselves in every aspect of this country. And while we only have one lifetime, we intend to come back and see as much as we can with the little time we're allotted. Even though this is the last video in our Indonesia series, we like to think of this not as goodbye, but as a see you again soon. To watch our Indonesia series from the beginning, click the playlist on the left. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.